That's Kong. He's king around here. He's God to these people. Madbox is a powerful 3D sculpting and painting tool that revolutionized the way digital artists approached high resolution detailing in the world of computer generated imagery. Created in 2007 by Sky Matter, a New Zealand based company, Madbox was initially designed by David Cadwell, Andrew Kamenesh, and Tibor Maja, former Weta digital artists. These creators were key contributors to visual effects in films like the Lord of the Rings trilogy and King Kong 2005. Madbox was used extensively in Peter Jackson's King Kong to create complex models, helping to elevate it to one of the industry's most respected tools for digital sculpting and painting. Madbox's development began as an internal tool at Weta Digital. Created by the founders to expand their own sculpting tool sets while working on large-scale cinematic projects, they saw the need for a sculpting program that combined ease of use with the ability to handle incredibly detailed models for visual effects projects. Madbox's first public release was in 2007 after a beta version was made available in 2006. Version 1.0 allowed artists to manipulate polygon meshes with an intuitive interface that made sculpting, painting and texturing much more accessible. Madbox was quickly adopted by artists and studios due to its capability to handle millions of polygons while offering real-time feedback features crucial for professionals working on high detailed characters and environment. Madbox allowed for the non-destructive sculpting of models through a system of 3D layers which could be blended and manipulated. It also supported stencil stamps which helped speed up the detailing process. The two gave artists creative freedom to shape models, overlay textures, and work with digital materials that mimic real-world surfaces such as skins, clothes, or metal. In August 2007, Madbox was acquired by Autodesk, a leading software company known for its 3D design tools including Maya and 3D's Max. This acquisition was seen as a positive move as Autodesk had the resources to further develop and integrate Madbox into its extensive ecosystem of digital content creation tools. Under Autodesk, Madbox continued to evolve with yearly updates adding features that improved interoperability with Maya and 3D's Max, allowing artists to seamlessly transition between applications for modeling, texturing, and rendering. One of the significant enhancements during this period was Madbox 2009, which introduced 3D painting and texturing features, allowing artists to paint directly on their model in real time. It also improved model subdivision algorithms, enabling higher levels of details. In 2010, Madbox's latest update, which was Madbox 2011, introduced a software development kit that gave developers the flexibility to build custom workflows and tools for Madbox. Additionally, integration with Autodesk's FBS file format allowed for smoother data transfer between Madbox and other Autodesk products. Although Autodesk's acquisition boosted Madbox's development and integration into professional pipelines, it never managed to outpace ZBrush, its primary competitor. ZBrush, developed by Pixelogic, which is currently owned by Magazine, had a significant head start. Having been released in 1999, it dominated the 3D sculpting market with its unique Dynamesh system, which allowed for unlimited creative freedom by automatically remeshing models as artists sculpted, a feature that Madbox lacked for several years. ZBrush's early adoption in high-end productions and frequent updates with innovative features kept it at the forefront of the digital sculpting world. Madbox also struggled to gain same level of community support as ZBrush, which fostered a robust ecosystem of artists sharing brushes, textures, and techniques. Autodesk, despite its resources, could not match the organic growth of ZBrush's user base, which continued to expand in both professional studios and individual artist circles. Additionally, the slow pace of significant updates to Madbox caused frustration amongst its user base, who were looking for more advanced features especially in dynamic topology and procedural workflow. By the mid-2010s, Madbox began to lose traction. Autodesk's focus shifted to other projects and acquisitions, notably pushing development for its flagship products Maya and 3D's Max. 
Madbox began receiving fewer major updates and innovations, and it became clear that Autodesk was no longer prioritizing its development. While Madbox remained a viable tool for digital sculpting and painting, its features started to stagnate compared to the rapid advancement made by ZBrush and even open source alternatives like Blender, which introduced its own sculpting tool that rivaled Madbox in certain respects. Autodesk's business models shifted towards subscription based services, bundling Madbox into its Autodesk collection alongside other tools. However, this further diluted Madbox's identity as a specialized sculpting tool as many artists viewed it merely as a companion to Maya or 3D's Max rather than a standalone powerhouse. This bundling strategy may have made the software more accessible, but it also contributed to the perception that Autodesk was no longer investing in Madbox as a leader in its field. As of the early 2020s, Madbox continues to exist but without any major innovation. It is still available as part of Autodesk's subscription service, but updates are mostly limited to bug fixes and minor performance improvements rather than introducing new tools or workflows. The larger sculpting community has largely migrated to ZBrush, 3D Coat, and Blender, which offers more cutting edge features for 3D artists. Madbox, once a front runner in digital sculpting, is now seen as a niche tool primarily used by those already entrenched in the Autodesk ecosystem. The lack of attention from Autodesk and the rapid evolution of competitors signal that Autodesk is no longer a key player in the industry while it maintains a dedicated, albeit user base. It is clear that Autodesk has shifted its priorities away from the development of Madbox. For many in the industry, it feels like Madbox has been abandoned, not officially discontinued but left to fade in the background while other tools lead the future of 3D sculpting and painting. Madbox's journey from an innovative tool used in the landmark films like King Kong to its current status as a largely neglected software is a testament to the ever-evolving nature of the digital content creation industry. Initially a game changer in the world of 3D sculpting, Madbox's decline is attributed to Autodesk's shift in focus and the rise of more dynamic community-driven tools like ZBrush, 3D Coat, and Blender. Today, Madbox remains a part of Autodesk's ecosystem, but its days as a leading force in digital sculpting are clearly behind it. If you've loved the video so far, a like, share, subscribe will be appreciated. You can continue to stick around if you want a side-by-side -side comparison between ZBrush and Madbox since Madbox's competition was mainly ZBrush. ZBrush ever since purchased by Maxin is no better than Madbox in terms of pricing since it's also now a subscription-based tool with multiple pricing models. ZBrush offers subscription options providing flexibility for studios and individual artists alike. What makes this unique is the fact that ZBrush is constantly receiving newer feature updates unlike Madbox which isn't receiving any more relevant updates but is still billing its users through Autodesk subscription services. The only unique aspect of still paying for Madbox's service is the fact that you are able to work seamlessly with 3D's Max and Maya, making it a convenient option for studios and individuals already working within the Autodesk ecosystem. Another differentiating factor between the two software are their sculpting and feature capability. ZBrush is packed with sculpting features such as Dynamesh for real-time topology adjustment, Sculptris Pro and Z Remesher, which is also responsible for automatic topology retopolization. These features give users more control over their models, allowing for dynamic sculpting without worrying about technical limitations. Another feature ZBrush is famously known for is its ability to manage scenes with billions of polygons, allowing artists to work with high resolution while maintaining real-time feedback. Last thing will be ZBrush's polypaint feature, which allows artists to paint directly on model surfaces without needing UV maps, thus enhancing its texturing workflow, although UVs can be applied later if needed for export. On the other hand, Madbox offers a more traditional layer-based sculpting system similar to Photoshop for painting. This system allows for precise control over layers of details which feels less dynamic compared to ZBrush's fluid sculpting tools.
We can also speak of Matboxes real-time sculpting and painting. Although capable of real-time performance, Matboxes sculpting efficiency doesn't quite match Z brushes when handling extremely large models or complex scenes. It does, however, offer a real-time painting system with excellent texture workflows that work seamlessly across VFX pipelines. Another thing is going to be Matboxes strength in VFX. Its layer system is ideal for handling multi-channel textures, which is so well thought of but isn't as advanced as in the painting field when compared to ZBrush. While ZBrush and Matbox offers robust tools for digital sculpting, they have diverged significantly in terms of functionality, innovation, and market presence. ZBrush, with its frequent updates, deep community support, and unparalleled sculpting tools, continues to dominate the industry for organic modeling and character design. Matbox, on the other hand, while initially strong in the VFX sector, has seen a slowdown in development and adoption, particularly as ZBrush has cemented its role as the go-to solution for detailed sculpting and modeling. In the long run, ZBrush stands out as the more future-proof option, while Matbox remains useful within specific VFX pipelines but faces a potential face-out as Autodesk shifts focus to newer technologies. For this reason, I am personally going to place Matbox at number 3, with ZBrush at number 1, 3D Coat at number 2, in terms of pure sculpting and texturing, leaving Blender at number 4. Okay, if you love this video, kindly don't forget to share, like, subscribe, until my next video, peace.